building waffle charts in Power BI like these without custom visuals. Is this possible? Well, yes. So let's get into it. If you open the Power BI report, which you can download from the link in the description, you see here some survey data, which I already filtered to a single measurement, which is, I find it very difficult to get up in the morning. We have thousand responses to it, and we want to show in a Waffle chart, for example, how much percentage of these responses agree to this statement. So what are the things we are going to need for this? First of all, we are going to need a grid, which represents these 100 data points, 100%. Then we are going to need a conditional formatting to format these grid data points only for these 23% markers, meaning for 23 data points. So let's start with creating this grid. I'm going to go to data view and let's create a new table. And let's call it waffles. And we can generate a number series from one to 10. We can use the generate series measure for it. Start value is one and value is 10. This creates us a single column table with a column called value and showing the numbers one to 10. This could be one of our axes, like an X axis on the grid or the Y axis on the grid. And what we need to assign a value on the other axis to each value here, meaning for example, for the value one on the X axis is going to need a value from one to 10 on the Y axis. Maybe it's not that clear to imagine it, but you will see it when we put it in a visual. So this is going to be our X axis. And I'm just going to copy it and we will have a Y axis. Also make it a bit larger. And then we return. So as we said, we want to have a combination of the two columns. So we can return this combined table and the generate function just does it for us, creating a cross join table. Let's add the Y axis first, and then we can add the X axis, hit enter. And yeah, the problem is that both columns would have the value as a name and it's not allowed. So what we can do is to rename the columns, which you can do by using select columns function. Here we need a table input, which is going to be our generate series, adding a name, let's call it X axis and adding an expression is going to be our value column. Then I'm going to copy it and we do the same for the Y axis changing here the value or the column name to Y. And let's see what happens. Yeah, so now you see we have a value of Y from one to 10 assigned to an X value. Then the same for the X value equals two, one to 10 on the Y axis and so on. Let's see how they look like in a visual. Since we are not using custom visuals and we want to have these bubbly bubble charts, Waffle charts, <laughs> we are going to use, maybe you have guessed a scatter plot. So let's add it and let's add the X column on the X axis and the Y column on the Y axis. Make sure that the values are not summarized. And now we have a nice grid. We can format it a little bit. First of all, we can remove the axis. Let's remove the X axis values title. Let's do the same for the Y axis, remove values title. Also, if you see the circles or the bubbles on the edges are cut off and we can add a margin to them and show them completely by adding a minimum and maximum value to the ranges of the axis. As you know, the values start from one to 10. So adding a one margin, one value of a margin, it could start at zero and 10 plus one would be 11. Now we do the same for the Y axis. We can add fixed values because this grid is always going to be the same. What's going to change is the formatting, the color formatting of this grid. We can also go to general and remove the title. And then we can make it a bit more compact by simply changing the markers. 
let's say we want the size of zero and then we can just drag it in a position where they are barely touching. So we have the bubbles already and what we want to show, we said we want to show this 23% and how we want to show it is that the waffle chart is filling up from bottom and then also from left to right. By 23% we are going to be at this, this stage, so it's going to be filled up until this point. And if you look into the values, we can see a certain logic. From left to right, the x value is increasing, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And then vertically, the y value is increasing. So from the y and the x values, we can combine the values for this 100% or 100 values. The x giving the second part, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the y giving the first part, like in the first row it would be zero and the second row it would be 10, then 20, 30, 40, and so on. But if you say that the y value should be in the first row zero, then we can change our table a little bit. Let's select the waffles table. And for the y axis, we will generate a series if instead of one to 10, it's going to be zero to nine. Let's add it. Okay, now we have to fix the margin. It's minus one for the zero and 10 for the nine. And now if you look at it, y is zero, so it's one to 10. Here y gives 10, so this is 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. So how we are going to create a value combination of them is to multiplying the y by 10 and adding the x value to it. We can either make a calculated column, but I'm just going to add it directly in this calculated table. And we can do it with the function add columns. And the name is going to be yx. And the expression is the y-axis or y column multiplied by 10 plus the x column. If you go back to the data view, you can see that it's a little bit mixed up. Let's sort it as sending. Then you see that we have a value from one to 100. And why is it useful for us? Is because we can say that whenever this yx value, this value from one to 100 is equal or smaller than the 23%, then it should be colored. If it's higher than that, then it should be not colored or colored differently. For that, first we will need this 23%. And the thing is that we have here this count response measure, which gives us the 23%. This is simply a division between the filtered count of the server responses versus all the server responses, the 100%, the thousand responses. But if you use this measure here, the responses and the all responses are going to be thousand both because the score grouping cluster is not filtering the waffles table. And therefore, we have to calculate this 23% directly, which I already did. If you click here on this count response agree, you can see that we calculate the responses in a table which is filtered only to the agree grouping or cluster. If we add it to our matrix, now you see that it only calculates it for the agree value. So we can use this now for our conditional formatting. So for the formatting, we are going to create a new measure. Let's call it color code Feffel agree. And it's going to be a simple calculation. If the sum of the y x column is smaller or equals to the count response agree, well, keep in mind this count response agree is 23%, meaning it's 0.23. And here in the waffle chart, we have whole numbers from 1 to 100. So that means that we want to multiply this percentage number by 100. So if this 100, which is going to make it 23, if this is true, then return 1. If it's not true, then return 0. Hit enter and then go to format your visual on the waffle chart and go to the markers, color, and add conditional formatting. Select rules. 
and look for color, color code level agree. And we will have two rules. If value equals one number, then at this color, if value equals zero number, then we can keep this lighter blue color. Click OK. And yeah, there you go. One thing though, that we need 23. And we know that we have here 10, 20 in the second row and only two here. So that means that one is missing. And why is that? Well, it's because we are working here with whole numbers. So if the 23 is smaller or equal to this 23%, then it's going to be colored. But this 23% is not really 23%. If you look at the decimal values, then you see that it's smaller than 23%. So the 23 is not going to be colored. What we need to do to fix it is to come to this color code measure and put this percentage into a round function. And then after the 100, hit the comma and the number of digits. We want to have zero decimal values. So at the zero, close the parentheses and press enter. And now we have also the last data point colored. I also want to do it for a different case scenario. Let's say that we don't only want to show this 23%, but we want to show all these percentages in the wafer chart. Well, we can do that too. Let's copy the wafer chart and we can create a new measure with a new color code. I'm going to make it off screen. There you go. And what we see here is first we put the sum of wafer yx in a variable and we return with the switch function different numbers for different conditions. The first condition is the same we had before. If the wafer value is smaller or equal to the count response agree multiplied by 100, then it returns 1. That's this bottom part. For the second condition, the count response neutral, we want to show here in the middle this 21%. And after that, we want to show the 26% disagree. You already have these two measures for the neutral and the disagree as well. The same logic like with the measure agree. And if you go back to our color code, wafer categorical, the second condition would be if the wafer value is larger than 23 and smaller or equal to 23 plus 21, 44, then color it. But we can also do it like this, just coloring the entire 44, 23 plus 21. And this is still only going to color this part above because in the switch function, the order of the conditions is important. If you have overlapping values, because both of these conditions color from 1 to 23, the first condition is going to matter. So every condition which covers the same area, it's not going to apply. That means that we can just simply add these two values, multiply them by 100, and this is going to be for our condition number two. And then for the third conditions, all the values larger than this are going to be our number three. Click OK, then make sure that your chart is selected, then go to format your visuals, markers, color, conditional formatting. And here we are going to select the other measure, add the new rule. And this is also going to be a number one that's going to stay the same, then two. This we can make gray, for example, that's the neutral. And then three is going to be disagree, also only equal to three. And this we can make purple, for example. And there you go. There is one little thing I would change. In the first waffle, we had a bottom up approach. So it's filling from the bottom, from left to right. But here on the right, we can have the opposite. So having the top down approach, filling from top to bottom, from left to right. That means that here in these rows, the color should be filled from the left side, not from the right side. And we can change it by just simply going to format your visuals, x-axis and invert range. Ta-da! A good idea is to support these charts with the values directly so people see what they actually mean. If you go to page two, here you can see some ideas, examples for it. For example, here you can just have the total number 
and supporting it with some textual context. Here we added all the values and colored the numbers accordingly. This is a text box. That's why the values are underlined. If you publish the report, it's not going to be underlined. And here in the bottom card, I used this new card visual and just color differently the different values. So this is it. I hope you liked it and learned something from it. Let me know in the comments if you have a use case to use it or if you have some feedbacks, how to improve it or some other ways to build it. And see you next time.